morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's service to us by way of his name, word, and with his very body and blood, and a special welcome to all of you who are watching us online. The service begins today for Holy Thursday, Maundy Thursday as it is known as well, with a corporate confession and absolution on page 290. After that, we go into the readings, and then we'll have the hymn of the day. Um, after the prayer of the church, just give me a few moments to prepare the table, and then we'll continue with the service of the sacrament. After the post-communion collect in this service, we just leave in silence. But if you could, before you leave, just kind of wipe down your pew like you normally have been, and your hymnal, that would be wonderful. Please stand, we'll have a few moments of silence, and we'll begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I will go to the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ, in which he strengthens our faith by giving us his body to eat and his blood to drink. Therefore, it is proper that we diligently examine ourselves, as St. Paul urges us to do. For this holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin, and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death, from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit, he became man so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and to deliver us, took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve. So that we may more confidently believe this and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye. This is my body, which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities. I give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins, and to comfort and establish the New Testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification. Giving him our most heartfelt thanks, we take up our cross and follow him, and according to his commandments, love one another as he has loved us. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from the one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with wine of many grapes and one bread made from countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and truth. May the Almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, Accomplish this in us. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins to him, imploring him for the sake of his son Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Please kneel for confession and absolution. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, 
and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. Please stand for prayer. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifested in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Holy Maundy Thursday is from Exodus chapter 24. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all just the just decrees. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And they offered them. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 9. When Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, now made with hands that is not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls and with the ashes of a heifer sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God, Therefore he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. For where a will is involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. For a will takes effect only at death, since it is not in force as long as the one who made it is alive. Therefore not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood, for when every commandment of the law had been declared by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that God commanded for you. 
In the same way, he sprinkled with the blood both the tent and all the vessels used in worship. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful, and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, A woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Our text for this morning's sermon is taken from the Gospel lesson with special emphasis on the following words. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. This is our text. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Israelites had a memory problem. They would often forget God's words and promises and all that he had done for them in the past. The result was that they would doubt his faithfulness and question their future. So God gave them a meal, a feast, called the Passover. Keep it every year, he said, as a memorial. This was a day to remember so that they would not forget. What were they not to forget? What the Lord did for them? That's part of it. But even more, this, that the Lord does not forget. They were not to forget that the Lord remembers every word he says, every promise he ever made, and every person he has created, always. There's not a single moment when you are not on his mind. That's what this meal he was about to give them was about. It's what the night of his betrayal was all about. Jesus keeping the promise that he made all the way back in in the garden where Adam and Eve had disbelieved God and believed the lie and brought sin and death into the world. The promise of a savior from sin, that's the promise he kept. He keeps all his promises, but that's the big one, isn't it? The promise of a savior from sin. And if from sin, then from death. God knew we needed more than that because of our memory problems, even more because of our sin problem. And so the night when he was betrayed, Jesus gives us a new meal, a new feast, the one that we need, his very body and blood, not just for once a year, but as often as we do this, that we remember and not forget that we come and receive the forgiveness that we need, that we proclaim the Lord's death, all that Jesus has done for us until he comes again. We have a memory problem, and there's no doubt about it. For one, we tend to be forgetful, and it's not just that more people today seem to have dementia and Alzheimer's disease than it seems from the past. The memory problem we have is we don't remember our past. It's the same problem the Israelites had. God had taken care of them through every situation over and over and over again. They faced dire times, and God miraculously brought them through it. And he did this over and over and over again. But when they faced the next challenge, when, when, things, or when things were just going just fine, they forgot about the Lord. They forgot that they needed him for every single day of their lives. On 9-11, way back, what, 2001, right? That horrendous thing that happened where these planes came into those towers. We watched as people were being burned alive, had to jump out of these towers to their death, figuring out which way they were going to die. It was horrifying. Now remember that day, what what happened is, without even publicizing much at all, we had a service that very day, and this place was jam-packed. It was jam-packed. Think about that. And what people said then is this, we will never forget, and then we forgot. After a time, we went back to the trivialities of life and didn't think much of God anymore or our need of him or care about others. 
We don't remember our past. We're just like the people who have gone before us ever since the fall of Adam and Eve. We don't remember our scriptures or catechism either, do we? Our Lord gave the Israelites the commandments, and us too. And did you hear what the Israelites said? They said, quote, all the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And then they didn't. <laughs> it's the same with us. And we even forget what the commandments are about or, or the fact that they do indeed apply to us. We forgot, forget that God gave us these commandments out of love for us. It will be for you that you'll have no other gods. And on and on and on. That you'll remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. That you won't steal. That you won't commit adultery. It'll be, be for you because if you, if you break these things, if you, if you disobey, bad things are going to happen. We forgot about that. Or we think that it's really not going to happen when we break God's commandments. I mean, thank God that he forgives us because we break all of them, whether it be thought, word, or deed. But we forget what it took to make that possible, that we would have the forgiveness of sins and life and peace with God and one another. Not only do we not do what the Lord has spoken, we do, not, we do what we want, actually, and we say what we want and think there's going to be no consequences. And then there are. We don't know what to do. And that's when God comes in in Christ. Look here, he says, and live. Our memory problems aren't just about what we fail to remember, but they're also, they also have to do with what we do remember. The hurts that foster thoughts of revenge toward others, the sins and failures that keep coming back at us in the back of our minds and harass us, our failures, the songs with inane lyrics that we remember easier than hymns, hymns that proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is. Why do I remember that? I never used that product. I watched a commercial when I was a kid. It's, by the way, for, do you know? Alka-Seltzer, Alka-Seltzer. By the way, the crowd in the first service never heard of that, even that same. Isn't that interesting? But why would I remember that? It, it means nothing, really. Like I said, I never even used the product. Instead of focusing in on what matters, remembering the Lord's words, having those words shape and form who we are. That's why we have the kids memorize hymns, by the way. Hymns that confess Jesus Christ and him crucified and risen from the dead. Because Jesus is the one who remembers. The Lord remembers, and what he remembers is what matters. You. Jesus remembers everything he has promised, every word, every person for whom he has suffered, died, risen from the dead, and ascended into heaven for. He remembers all of that. He remembers you. I always am comforted when someone says, I'm praying for you, pastor. That's a wonderful thing as the body of Christ. But Jesus remembers to pray for you too. He's your advocate before God the Father in heaven. And when you fail, he's there to advocate for you and say, I got it covered, Father. He remembers us by name and wants what the Father wants. For us all to live together with him and one another in paradise, together with him and each other. So Jesus remembers you in his prayers. He does not forget. He remembers that you need him both for this life and for the life to come. It's why he comes to you right here and now and whenever and wherever the gospel is proclaimed and his sacrament administered. He comes to save you, to deliver the salvation that he won for you in his suffering, death, and resurrection. So today is the day when Jesus not only gives you his word, he puts it in you. He gives you his very body and blood, the word made flesh and blood, so that you can eat and drink with God and celebrate your salvation. Did you catch that in the Old Testament even? They ate and drank with God. 
we eat and drink with God. And we give thanks because this is the meal by which we receive his forgiveness, his life, and his peace. This is the meal that makes us a community that spans not just throughout this world, but into heaven itself. We are one with God and one another. This is the city of God, made so by the word of God. And the Lord does not forget you here. The Lord does not forget that you need him. Before he lays down his body and blood on the cross, he lays it on the table for his disciples to eat and drink. This is my body. This is my blood, he says. He does that for you right here and right now. The word made flesh is put in us. We live in him. And we become one flesh with him because he bodies and bloods us together with him into one body. One body. All your sins are forgiven, and they are forgotten. Today is the day. The Lord does not forget. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our lives in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church. On this holy night in which our Lord gathered his disciples in the upper room, we come to you, O Lord, in his name and with the concerns of our hearts for ourselves and all people. Grant to us zeal for your house, O Lord, and love for the things of your kingdom. Preserve those who are unable to gather together as they wish and grant them their desire quickly. Give your church harmony and peace to confess your word with one voice before the world. Cover us with the blood of Christ, Grant us your spirit, that we may walk in your ways and do the good you desire. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, give to us faithful pastors who will preach your word in season and out, and give us ears and hearts willing to hear and heed your voice. Raise up godly men to serve us as pastors, and raise up godly men and women to serve as teachers and in other offices for your service. Bless those preparing for full-time church work in our colleges and seminaries, as well as those considering church work callings. Do not let the world's fears turn them from a faithful and devoted ministry. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the midst of plagues and enemies that threaten and a world filled with conflict and terror, give us wise leaders, O Lord, that we may be preserved from harm. Guide those who make and administer our laws to act in timely and prudent ways, and give to all judges knowledge to render justice with mercy. Bless all military, emergency, and medical workers who defend and help us here and abroad. Lord, in your mercy. As generously as you have given to us, O Lord, teach us to be generous in giving, that the poor may not suffer want, nor your church be deprived of the resources to serve your purpose, both here and across the world. Lord, in your mercy. Have mercy, Lord, spare your people and turn this pandemic away. Preserve the sick, comfort the fearful, and grant to the dying your peace. Give healing in accordance with your will and strength to bear up under the burdens of this mortal life and comfort and hope in this and every trial. Lord, in your mercy. Give us your word and spirit, O Lord, that we may discern your son's presence in this bread and cup. Leave the table with the good conscience of sins forgiven. Keep us in repentance, that we may not be overcome by sin, but pursue goodness and righteousness all our days. Protect and cleanse the lips of those who eat and drink, and remove their fears. For this testament is the promise to strengthen us in body and soul to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. You know, O Lord, what we need, and you have promised never to abandon us. Help us to endure in faith and with a joyful countenance receive the blessings of your grace and the answers to our prayers. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise be, by the tree of the cross, be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, and those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul, the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming.